Welcome back to another episode of Crystallic Fishing and welcome back underwater everybody. Unfortunately, I did not do as much topside footage as I would have wanted on this trip. So, some of the explaining of what's going on is going to have to happen over voiceover. This is day one. We got there at around like, I don't know, like 4 p.m. It was still light and we tried to shoot and the viz was horrible. So, we stayed out all day looking for good viz but couldn't find it and ran in. Says we're out of fuel. Uh oh, and we're not back yet. Uh oh! <laughs> He's coming over. That's such a small one. That's like a little baby, dude. How are you? <laughs> dude, it's, it's 2 p.m. Yesterday was a, a fiasco. We tried to get out and do a viz check and we couldn't even see three feet. And now we can we can see again. So that's good. Okay, so as you can see, this day is much cleaner, much clearer. We're up shallow, and the way this video is gonna work is that I'm dividing it by the days. So part one is gonna be day zero, one, and two. Part two is gonna be days three and four. You can see a dog snapper spook out of the rock right there. I go to the cave, my gun's pointing at it. And so this series of dives are gonna be me trying to get that that dog snapper from the cave. This cave is deceptively very deep. You can almost like, it almost just looks like a lobster ledge from the top and then you get down and it's it goes way back, pokes all the way out to the other side of the rock. Um, but you can also tell that the water isn't like perfectly back to being clean. You can see all the particles and everything going on. So a lot of this whole trip was us struggling to find good fizz. That's why we weren't diving that much for Wahoo because we couldn't find good enough fizz for the Wahoo. They like that gin clear blue water and the blue water out there all looked like this and it would, would have been really hard to find the Wahoo. There's a little juvenile Goliath, which is really cool. You can see that dog snapper way back there. My light was just on him all the way back up in the cave. You can see his eye right there. I'm gonna take the shot right now. Boom. I stick him, you can hear him kind of struggling back there and I head back up for what amounts to be a uh, kind of lawn recovery. I ended up quickly realizing that it was not the fish, it was the shaft that was stuck way in the back of the cave. And so I, tr I did a few drives to try to get the shaft out. It was just so far back that I wasn't really able to get it on my own. So I ended up grabbing the, the little gun so that I could put a second shot in the fish pull the fish up my shooting line and cut the shooting line um so that's what i'm doing here i get a good second shot through the cheeks you can see how far back i already am in the cave and the shaft was probably double that back there and i wasn't even sure if i could fit my body through the hole that the shaft had flown through so now i'm going in for another recovery dive there's a nice big ray there And as I head back, I'm trying to get a hold of that shaft that, that I have just shot into the fish and use it to orient the fish's head towards me. So I start pulling. I get the fish's head out of like the main hole, but it required me to pull pretty hard. So I back out and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get it on the next dive. So this dive, I go in with the intention of this is the extraction dive. I've pulled the fish's head out of the hole. The shaft is just sitting right there. You can see it moving because the fish is kind of struggling. And literally all I have to do here is just that final pull. Kind of guide him through. I'm kind of working in the dark here, but there he is. And I'm just pulling him up the shooting line of the, the Marauder, the gun I originally shot him with. A nurse shark just pulled up, kind of scared the crap out of me. I'm not gonna lie, because I didn't, I didn't see it coming. Evan grunted, but I didn't realize that's why he was grunting. So I just have to undo the shooting line here, and then the fish is mine. 
unfortunately, right here, my gun is stuck up under the, the ledge because it floated, so I had to let it go. But we go back down, and we get the gun out from under the ledge here. You can still see the, the fish is fine. I was so shocked the nurse shark didn't turn around when I dropped the fish and tried to eat it. Little miracles. Nurse shark still on the ledge. Got the gun. And that's a caught fish. Took about like 30 minutes to recover, probably. Really pretty dog snapper. It's not the biggest one I've ever shot, but seeing them at all in the keys is is a treat. So, finally got one. That is a small fish that took a lot. How long were we recovering it for? Like 30 minutes. 30 minutes probably? But we got him. Almost lost him to the nurse shark, but we didn't. And I lost a dive light and a shaft. So yay, fun. Alright. Next spot. So before we left, we, I actually ended up taking a shot on Akuda so that we could cube him up for chum at the next spot. Um, very glad we did this. It worked very well. The chum, like as soon as we had it dropped, there were just blacks everywhere. <laughs> so we got this Kuda, and he became our chum slick. Had to push the shaft through his back so I could break it so he would stop struggling. So this is that next spot. We've moved from about 25 feet to about 65 feet, so we're doing some, you know, more real diving now, a little bit more serious. We're doing strict one up, one down. Evan's above me. Um, the day, it's also getting darker because we started at like 2 p.m. So, um,. You can kind of tell that the viz has changed, not because it's actually changed, but because the sun is kind of coming down a little bit. Uh, I get down here, and already I'm seeing blacks everywhere. There's one, two. Um, I kind of don't know which one I want. I was surprised to see them at all at the first spot, um, and I take a, a bit of a rush shot. It ends up holding. Uh, I get up to the surface with it, and then I feel him pull. And that's all that's left. This one is uh, another dive where I came down a little bit unprepared. Uh, at least like mentally to shoot a fish. I kind of get down and I'm just like, oh look, there's another one on the very next dive after that last one I shot. And I give chase to him a little bit. And then there's another bigger one right behind him. And I just kind of decide... I'm not going to take a shot that's far and, you know, have another fish tear out. So I don't. This dive, I'm like, alright, going down, this spot's covered in fish, I'm prepared to shoot a fish, I'm not afraid of unloading the gun, not afraid of pulling the trigger, just kind of, literally the whole way down, I'm just thinking, like, if I see something, I'm pulling the trigger. So I end up seeing this mango as soon as I get down. I'm like, all right, man, time to die. I love mangoes anyway. Like you'll see me later uh, in this video, like pass up on a black for a mango because I just love the taste of mangoes so much. Evan heard my gun go off and he came down exactly the way he should be, making sure sharks aren't following up my fish, etc. Perfect safety diving from Evan as per usual. But that is the second fish of the trip. Oh, finally got a nice mango. Wind's kind of picked up a little bit. But we're going to get back in. We're seeing blacks everywhere. We just got to get one, really. We're going to put him in the new fish bag. Peace. Okay, to keep the video from being like 
30 minutes long. I'm speeding up some parts of the dives. Right now, this part is sped up, but I stopped the speeding up thing, like, way before I get to the bottom. So right here, I see three mangoes already on the bottom. As I move over closer to the ledge, I see a couple more mangoes. You can see them further in the back, and then I see this black grouper, which will come into view right as I come over this ledge. I end up passing up on the black because I want a mango. I think mangroves snapper are so delicious. And I see this one, and I kind of wait for him to go broadside on me and just totally whiff. Yeah, that was just... That was on me. I don't know what I was doing there. Black, two mangoes. So, this next dive, uh, getting down there, and, uh, I'm looking to not do that again. Although I didn't really, like, I didn't really blame myself for that one. I just, you know, sometimes you miss shots and it's not the fault of any particular error that you'd focus on. Anyway, on my way down, I see this mutton. I take kind of a long shot, but at least I knew it was going to hit because I, I aimed for a little bit longer. I didn't know how my shot was, so I was playing him soft, soft though, especially because of all of the tearing out and missing that I had been doing all day anyway. Evan was already on his way down as I'm on my way up here. You kind of see him as I put my head back in the water. Heading down there. You see him right there with his snorkel. Pulling the fish up. And thank God for double flopper shafts. You'll see as I pull this fish up that there's a... The second flopper is barely in the skin of his stomach right there. Right? But then as I pull him closer, I realize the first flopper is engaged on the other side of the fish. So, thank God for double floppers. I got a nice mutton for the day. A little snapper variety. I'm just missing the Cubera for the snapper slam. This dive is torture. Uh, this was probably the biggest black that we had seen all trip. Uh, I know this because the strategy that we were using to get down to look for these blacks is I was looking around looking for ones that were spooking because as you're we getting to the bottom all the fish would they would like flick they'd turn away and that's how I knew this one is just staring at me you can see him right there just dead on even when he spooks right here he doesn't really go far and then he squares up on me again and I take the shot it's a little high and so he tears out it's like high in his head basically I was going for the stone shot and that that sucked So this is start of day two, loading up, water looks a lot cleaner. We start in deeper spots. We're not doing the, the shallow warm up anymore because we know the water's clean and we're kind of excited to get to get going. Um, what you saw at the boat ramp, by the way, was there was a dude who didn't engage his, uh, his um, oh, why am I blanking on this? It's been so many months since I've been out. The winch at the front of his trailer so he hooked the boat up to the winch and didn't lock it and he started to pull away and the pontoon boat fell all the way back and i posted it and tagged qualified captain and they reposted it and that was that was cool I, I thought it was at least anyway i get down here and i see more mangoes and you know how much i love mangoes so i'm like one of these things gonna die it's that one kaboom I thought about waiting for a two for one, but like we had not shot enough fish this trip for me to be playing that kind of game. So I end up coming up with my my prize fish. Mango snapper are just so tasty. Like they're just I don't understand people who don't shoot them. They're like, oh they're too easy. Who cares? Who cares? They're good. They're tasty. It's actually better that they're easy because that means guaranteed lunch. Like, that sounds like a win to me. Alright. Heading back down after the mango and um, continuing to disappoint 
myself, my family, my friends, my followers with this one. Um, I'm not really sure why I missed so many shots this trip. I think it's probably because I didn't dive for months. And then I just showed up and I was like, alright, let's do a dive trip. You know what I mean? Hopefully over the summer I'm not missing as many shots. But see this guy? And I just... I don't have an explanation for that, really. I just... Look, he's taunting me. You can see him over there. I like. I just don't... I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, so we're on the Evan cam now. Um, don't know what's wrong with his GoPro. I also don't know why he chose to plane out this tall from the bottom. But thank God he did. Because he looks up right here. And you're about to see the biggest kingfish that has ever appeared on this channel. Boom. Right there. He kicks like mad towards it. I was on the surface and I saw him. He planes out kicks mad towards it. He gets that shot and his gun locks up. Which is what you're seeing right now because he's not able to go up. He gets the real fix basically and he starts heading to the surface now. But yeah, his reel was locked up just like it did on that barracuda. Uh, for the beginning of that because it took off so fast. Big King, I'm on! I'm on, Big King Fish! I'm on! So, that Kingfish spooled him pretty much immediately. So I swam way up to, to kind of chase it down, swimming up the line, and we ended up catching up to it after a few minutes. You can see it right there. So I go down to take this backup shot, and I'm like, oh god, there's so like there's so much pressure. Like, oh, I can't mess it up. This, I see the shot is actually not that bad. So I'm like, okay, I have time to make this backup shot perfect, whatever, whatever. And what do you know? Once again, I miss. But I was like, it's fine. I'm, I'm just going to head up with the fish. Evan thinks I made the shot. I did not, in fact. I whiffed. But fish is gassed out. It's fine. My shot's better than I thought. Now it's just a matter of securing it. Oh, my, shot, my shot's so much better than I thought. Yeah, alright. We got Evan with his king. Hold her up. Look at that. It's a nice freaking fish, man. Get her in the boat. Alright, this this dive might be the craziest dive of the whole trip. And I don't even land I don't even shoot a fish. Uh some context, we had given up on Wahoo like thirty six hours before this. We were like, Yeah, it's not happening, we're screwed. At least not in this area, not off the skiff. So we were just reef hunting. We're in sixty feet of water, maybe. And we're just, you know, sitting hunting the reef, looking around. I kind of, I kind of drop here and realize it's dead. Like, I don't even see bait. I'm just like, okay. And so, I look around for a second, but I kind of start heading up already. I'm just like, well, shoot, I guess we're switching spots. This is after Evan had shot his kingfish. It had been a while since we got back down in the water, and it looked like things had changed. I look up from my dive watch, and I will slow this down so you can see this. Look at all them wahoo. Those are big wahoo too. Those aren't little ones. Those are like, you know, 60 to 80 pounders. And of course I take a Hail Mary. But, wow. Just wow. Alright, now we're back at the Evan, Evan cam. We're at a different spot now. I don't know why his camera makes everything look so gray and green. But, a uh, different spot. We're about like 40 feet of water. Plugs this nice mutton. I show up to help recover it, put a second shot in. He had called for a second shot. The shot looked fine, but I wanted to make sure I, I did what he said. So I put one through his cheek really quick. And then Bruce the shark decides he wants a piece of the mutton. So he kind of stalks us all the way back to the boat like this. Uh, it wasn't like that bad because he, didn't, he never got like super close. But it was definitely like unnerving not having either of our guns loaded, swimming like a hundred yards back to the boat.
Brucey Bruce on our tails, but we made it. All right, so we are now back at the exact same spot where I missed that black and got my shaft stuck in the coral head. We were figuring like maybe maybe he's back. Um, he wasn't, but another one that was smaller but still legal uh, was. So getting back there, and this is like the exact same rock. There's a nice macro right there. Same rock, dropping down on it. I kind of drop down on it too directly. The current takes me a little bit more right over it than I want it to be. I see this black right here, and I'm kind of waiting for him to get settled. I go out to the left, even though he's squared up on me. I go out to the left, kind of get my hand on a rock, and just kind of wait for him to give me a nice broadside. He comes out this other side, and I see him flick here, and that's perfect shot right there. Gets all up in that rock, and I'm like, then my GoPro dies. So this is Evan now. He's going to make the recovery, and this is one of the craziest recoveries I've ever, I've ever seen personally, other than ones involving like sharks and groupers and stuff. But he follows my shooting line down, and it ends up being not that bad of a tangle. Like he's just the the groupers just kind of sitting there, but it pulls itself off the shaft like right immediately, and Evan down there just shoots him shot in the dark like he's in the mist he's, he's hard to see gets him and is able to pull him up that's crazy like that bike was sitting in a bunch of silt it was very hard to make out exactly where it was and evan just nailed it i was confused i was like where what's going on Where's my shaft? Did you shoot a different fish? That's what I thought. So I go to put a backup shot in what I thought was Evan's fish. I did not realize this was the same black grouper. I thought he had shot a different one while he was down there. My fish? Dude, your fish, I grabbed it out of the hole. It f***ing came off, I trapped him, I shot him. Woohoohoohoo! Yeah, man! Let's go! Holy f***! Yeah, but that's definitely a, a joint fish. Alright, so this is the last dive of the day. Getting on down, you can, you can see it's getting kind of dark, so day two is approaching its end here. I also think this might be on the same this is on the same spot that's that same rock this time i'm dropping on the reef looking for for other blacks maybe a mango maybe a yellow jack i end up seeing a couple mangoes but this one here catches my eye kind of the, the biggest one comes up to me i plug him and that is three mangoes for the cooler that makes me very happy. I love mangoes. I love mangoes and I love kibera. I love mutton. I love. I just love snapper, really. And hogfish. Oof. Like I, I like grouper. Grouper tastes great. I think it's overrated compared to snapper. I think snapper is way better than grouper. But yellowjack is the best for me because I can eat yellowjack raw all day and with nothing, no soy sauce, no nothing. There's my mango. Okay, we just finished day two. Look at that. That's a full fish bag. We have a lot of filleting to do. And then tomorrow we wake up at 6 a.m. to go shoot Wahoo with uh, my boy CC Spearfishing. Um, so we will be out there tomorrow drifting the blue water um, after doing the reefs today. And we'll see you out there. Peace.